Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to my channel, Data Driven Decisions. Um, you know, I'm a business intelligence engineer. That's what I do for a living. And um, SQL has been uh, the primary language that I use each and every day to fulfill my duties um, as a business intelligence engineer. Why SQL? Um, it's because data always comes out of a database. And a database is always SQL. Um, there are hundreds of different databases out there. And um, you know, SQL is always the language of them, how to work with such data. Um, and uh, you know, SQL is different across all those databases. They have their own dialect, but it's of the same essence. It's always the same select statement. The, with the where statement and the from and the joins. Um, just sometimes the functions are a little bit different, you know, like your date functions or your string functions. Uh, that might be different, but, um, you know, the, uh, the skeleton of the query is always the same. And, uh, you know, a lot of my job is um, migration of, of work. So, you know, some work gets built um, in one BI tool and in one database and the company is moving it to a new ecosystem a new platform a new database a new bi tool and my job is to um you know translate that work and build it in the new system and um you know i'm pretty good at it it's it's not hard, it's not easy work but um it's something i've gotten good at um you know code translation is a very valuable skill, um, you know, everyone on in job interviews always asks, how much experience do you have with this tool and that tool? Like, that's the only thing that matters. But I mean, I use AI tools to um, allow me to do my work and I have no fear of whatever language I have to, I'm up against. I can, I can figure it out. Um, on my recent project, I worked in, um, Microsoft Fabric for a client, and um, you know their original dashboard was built in Click, and Click had its has its own um, semantic model uh, language, and um, I didn't really know the language, but I just used um, Copilot and ChatGPT to help explain what was what the code was doing, and then once I knew what the code was doing, I, I just I know how to translate that in SQL. That's just, I just know how to do that. And um, so yeah, SQL is really the, the most important language to know. The other very important language is Python. And that usually uh, becomes before SQL um, in that, um, you know, you, you always want to build a, an automated process that brings your raw data to your database. And uh, that usually takes Python, you know, uh, whether it's online streaming data, whether the data comes from a different database, um, Python is always that ETL tool to um, move data from its source to the database. And, um, you know, you can, you actually can do a ton in, Python. You can you can write SQL in Python. You can do all the data transformations in Python. You don't have to work in a database. You can do all the work in Python. Um, you can you know data science is very heavy in Python. You do your statistical analysis in Python, such as your ANOVA, your logistic regression, your Poisson, your machine learning, um, you know your GLMs, your regression. Um, you know all that can be done in um, in Python. Um, for my personal finance ecosystem, uh, you know, the assembly line is, uh, you know, the source data either comes from an Excel workbook or from uh, personal capital slash mint. Um, and then what's next is Python, the ETL, taking that source data and automatically moving it into a database, not really doing anything else, uh, not doing any transformations, not really cleaning the data. I save that for SQL, and so uh, step step three is is 
is the big work, the work I do in BigQuery. So in Python, I move the data all from its source to BigQuery. And then in BigQuery, I do all the data transformation, all the data enriching, all the data shaping. Um, you know, I front load all processing. I try to do absolutely everything you can do in the database and try not to do really anything in the BI tool except measure definement. You have to do that downstream. But all your calculated columns, um, all your sort order columns, um, all your different uh, table shapes, whether it be a very wide table, whether it be a very long table, whether it be a time series table, whether it be a columnar table, um, you know, all that data manipulation uh, I do in SQL. Um, I've been using SQL for 15 years. I know it like the back of my hand. I, um, uh, you know, can read anyone's SQL. I have my own structure for how I do SQL. Um, you know, I, I, there's really never a problem I can't tackle in SQL. Uh, yeah, I can even do statistical analysis in SQL. Um, let me share my screen and I'll show you um, the the BigQuery script for the personal finance ecosystem. All right. So here is BigQuery. This is BigQuery, and uh, this is um, the database of Google Cloud Platform. So right now we're inside Google Cloud Platform, which is one of the main cloud services. Um, I know GCP very well, simply because um, the company I work for, we, we were once uh, you know, sponsored by Google. We got a lot of projects from Google. So most of our projects were from GCP. Uh, as of today, we're now more of a Microsoft shop. So most of our projects are coming out of Azure and uh, most late uh, Microsoft Fabric, the, the hottest data and analytics ecosystem out there right now. Um, but, you know, everything I, I do and see, I do uh, for this project, all the hard work really is SQL. And uh, this is the script and it's very long. It's got um, almost 10,000 lines of code and uh, it runs from start to finish. And, um, you know, all SQL does is it just works with tables, you know, and a table is just an assortment of rows and columns. And, and that's it. You know, that's all that SQL does. So uh, with that in mind, you know, there's still so much more you can do, you know, inside a table, how to manipulate it, how to do everything. Um, you know, all that gets done in code. Um, but yeah, um, SQL is, is a lifesaver. Um, you know, the general way to write SQL is, um, you know, a table is made up of rows and columns. And uh, it always starts with a select statement. You select the columns of which you want to, you know, bring to the new query or the new table that you're trying to create, and they got to be comma separated. So in this query, I'm just I'm calling in a lot of different uh, columns, and they have different aliases, a dot and b dot, and that's because they're coming from different tables. Um, and uh, if, if it doesn't have an alias, that means it only exists in one of the tables so that the engine just automatically knows where it's coming from. Uh, a coalesce statement says if if the field is missing, if the value is missing, then convert it to zero. You know, you want to do that with metrics because null equals zero. So, yeah, this is just a general uh, select statement. It's pulling in a lot of different fields. And then let's go to the bottom. So pulling in a bunch of fields, pulling in a bunch of fields, and then it, then it's then you get to a from statement. That's this is your base table. Um, you usually want it to be your fact table. You know your largest table that you're going to work with. That's what you start with, and then uh, then you join in any other you know dim tables um, to the query, and this is a, a subquery going on right here. Um, I always left join, you know, left join is the most popular join. Nobody uses right join. Everyone uses left join. The reason why is because you never want to change the granularity of the fact table. Um, you never want to lose rows out of the fact table just because of a join. Um, if you have an inner join, then it's got almost got like a hidden where statement to it because it's going to filter out rows when, when the join criteria isn't met. Uh, you know, when it comes to just general, uh, you never want to take rows out of the fact table. Um, that usually will be an er erroneous 
and it's not erroneous when um, dim field attributes, dim you know, attributes don't exist. If if you inner join, you might lose rows. Well, um, yeah, that makes it wrong. But left joining it doesn't make it wrong. Um, so you never want to really do inner joins. Um, you know, when you join, you got you got your join parameters. Here's a simple join parameter on year month equals beer be meet that year month. Um, you know, this is commented out code. Um, this is the order statement for the query. Uh, this is what tells you that tells the engine that it's the end of the query. Um, you know, there's so much I can go into for SQL. Uh, as far as how to teach it, um, you know, you really just got to get dirty with it. Um, but, you know, for this personal finance project, I try to do almost everything in this SQL script. All the, all the transformations get done here. And, you know, the final thing is this data model. This is what I'm producing. So this is kind of what my aim is while I'm SQL coding is to, is dimensional modeling practices this is dimensional modeling practices fact tables and dim tables star schemas um that's what this is right here it's a very nice big data model but it's accurate and everything seems to be connected to each other for the most part um so that when you get to the dashboarding realm you got um i mean this there's there's just tons of different tables and fields to work with and they're all interconnected and they all are synced together and you know this is just you know a beautiful data model and a beautiful ecosystem um and uh you know it's really thanks to sql it's thanks to the database um you know doing everything in your database building wide tables building long tables building columnar tables building time series tables building dim tables, building fact tables, doing all that in SQL. The technique is known as front-loading processing. Um, a lot of people don't do anything in the database. They just move the data, and then they rely on um, the BI tool to do all the transformation. You go to Power Query, and uh, you know Power Query allows you to do a lot of the stuff that you would do in SQL data transformations. You see right here, here's some Power Query steps that are doing some data transformation. Um, this is a you know table straight from Excel where there is no database in between. So it's gotta be done in uh, Power Query. I do not like this technique. It, you know, this is clunky. This seems, these produce a lot of errors that I always have to fix. Um, you know, if I go to the tables that are coming from BigQuery, um, you don't see really any transformations. I do filter a row right here, just change the table type. But, you know, these are all tables from the database and there's no uh, further data manipulation. And that's because I front load all processing. So in the BI tool, it's really clean. There's no, um, there's not much logic in the BI tool. It's just, it takes tables um, and then it defines the data model and then produces the dashboards. It doesn't have like a semantic layer full of logic where, you know, tables are transformed and rows are deleted and things are just way redefined completely. It really creates a mess um, in the BI tool and it's hard to be right. It's really hard to migrate you'd be so much better off if you just did all that work in the database in SQL so that when you have to migrate to a new tool, you're still doing nothing in the BI tool. You're just, you're front loading all processing. And in the BI tool, you're just defining the model definition, you're defining the measures and you're building the dashboard. That's what you want to do. Um, you know, Python, since I do everything in, in the database, I don't do much in Python other than move the data. I move it from its source to the database. And this is the code that does that work. You know, For instance, this uh, monthly finance Excel file, I first import the table. Uh, this, this is the file and this is the sheet. 
turns it into a data frame, you know, and I do some minimal data manipulation only because, you know, there were certain things that wouldn't allow it to even be exported to a database. So I did all the data, mani data manipulation necessary just to bring it to the database. Um, and then I, I did all further work in the database. So just, you know, I changed the names, not because they're the final names, but just to get rid of the special characters that the database wouldn't allow. You see in these uh, field names, they have uh, special characters and databases don't like that. So you just got to make the minimal data manipulation changes in Python. You don't really have to do much else. This is just an ETL script just to move data, but don't do anything else. Um, that's really what I use Python for. And then I save all the work for the database. And, and then, it, you know, for the client, it's, it's like, this is the big script. This is a script that does all the logic, everything. It's all in one script. It all runs in sequence from start to finish. It can be scheduled. It can be automated. And, uh, you know, that's really the meat of the project is what's, what's in the database, the, what the work in SQL. And, yeah, so long script, um, you know. Just a ton of work that, you know, in SQL, and I'm, I'm really happy I have this. It's uh, very valuable to me. You know, code is very valuable, especially when it always runs and it doesn't produce errors. That's what this is. So thank you for watching. Uh, stay tuned for another video. Have a good one.